By the end of this video, you're going to have the exact game plan and the knowledge you need to make your first $1,000 as a loot maker and a producer. This video is for those of you who are just starting out as sample makers and looking for a game plan that is proven to work. Stick around in this video and hear how we made our first $1,000 and how we would do it again even quicker if we reset back to zero today. Boys, grab your pen and your pad. Enjoy. Alright boys, before we jump into the source of the video, we're going to quickly explain to you how we made our first $1,000. So our first $1,000 were split up into two income streams. 85% coming from collab sales and the other 15% coming from our multi-kit that we dropped in March, Utopia. Which when we look back at it now, slowed us down so much getting to that first $1,000. So we're going to show you guys how to not make that same mistake that we did. As you can see here, it took us roughly 8 months to make our first $1,000. You can see there's no consistent income and it's just up and down for the first eight months so that's exactly what you can expect and most likely what's going to happen to you guys especially if you're starting out however as you grow as a music producer your income each month will start to grow exponentially and will become more consistent every month in the beginning of international we were purely focused on free sample packs and sending out loops to people we did this in the hopes of getting collab sales by doing this we gained momentum and started to get more and more collab sales until we dropped the Utopia multi-kit in March, which ruined us for months. For a month, we worked on Utopia. We didn't send any free samples out, no free sample packs. So there's no material to be used to sell beats on. In the following months, even after we dropped Utopia, there was a huge dry spell of people using our loops because we just hadn't been posting them and people had forgotten about us. And as a result, you can see in April, May, and June, the sales were fucking shit. We genuinely think if we hadn't done this Utopia multi-kit, we definitely would have hit $1,000 by June. The main problem with the release of our Utopia, we had no brand and no credibility to show for our work. We hadn't even started posting YouTube tutorials back then. So the lesson to be learned here from our story is to just focus on those collab sales for that first year of doing samples. Don't get tempted into selling paid products, whether they're multi-kits, drum kits, loop kits. Focus on getting better at loops and sending them out to get them on YouTube type beats. This is exactly what we would do if we had to start over again. For those of you who are just starting out, we're going to explain exactly what a collab sale is. To put it simply, a collab sale is when a beat maker has used your loop and sold their beat. The transaction is done through a website called BeatStars, and when that beat is sold, you get a cut from being a collaborator on that track. The majority of the time, if you've made the loop completely by yourself and the beat maker is going to sell a beat using that loop, he will add you as a 50% collaborator, meaning you both are entitled to 50% of the sales each. The only reason your split should be less than 50% is if you've made the loop with somebody else, meaning if there were two people making the loop, you would split that 50% for the beat maker and then 25 and 25 for the two loop makers. And finally, the way the artists and the buyers find the beats most of the time are through YouTube. Just be aware that not everyone uses beat stars and there are beat sales that are made through Instagram DMs and emails directly to PayPal. Sometimes these producers will let you know, other times they won't. So you've just got to accept this as part of being a loop maker. Another thing that happens as your loops start to get out there more is that producers are going to upload beats to beat stars without adding you as a collaborator. Whether they're intentionally doing it or sometimes they even just forget. This happens to all loop makers but if you do hear your loop out there on a beat or a song get in contact with the producer and try to get your splits even we have people who don't add us on beat stars as a collaborator but one thing that does help is having a brand and having credibility to your name so people are less likely to take advantage of you so what to do to make your first $1,000 with collab sales? There are four main things that you're going to be putting your time into to get these collab sales. Making loops, outreach, sending loops, and posting free loop kits. We talk about all these steps a lot in our videos, so we're going to keep these very brief. But for those of you who are new, listen up. So the first stage is making loops, and this is going to be where most of your time is spent. The most important thing with this is choosing a niche and sticking with that niche for at least your first year. Every time you switch niches, your journey to your first $1,000 is going to get slower and slower. For us, we chose Travis Scott x Don Toller X Gunner Q Beat style loops, forgetting on type beat channels such as Travis Scott X Don Tolliver type beat channels, Gunner type beat channels. So choose that niche and focus on dominating it. Making loops should be the first priority of the workday. You want to get that done before anything else. The other tasks are less mentally demanding and you can do those after you've made loops. Now for a disclaimer, if you're just starting out making these loops, give this step at least a couple of months until your loops have improved. If you start off by sending out shitty beginner loops to producers, you can quickly burn those bridges, get put into spam and be known as a shit loop maker. Just really want to make that clear boys as it is an important step. 
Now that you have a system of making loops, you need to do outreach to find producers to send those loops to. When we started, we went straight to where these beats were being sold, BeatStars and YouTube. Search up your type beat niche on YouTube and BeatStars and find producers who are using loops that sound similar to yours. You can get their email on BeatStars or you can find the email in the description of YouTube videos. But before you go and spam their inbox with loops, hold on a minute because that is not what we recommend. Rather, we would recommend building a relationship with the producer in Instagram DMs. Compliment them, talk to them, build some rapport with them before you start to send loops to them. And once these producers are okay with you sending loops to them, they'll give you their email and you can start sending loops to them. Now, once you start to collect a bunch of emails of producers, you want to build email lists in a Google extension like MailTrack, which is how we do it. This is great because you can put emails in lists with the type of beat they make and the vibe of loops they use. For example, you can have a guitar list, a piano list, and so on. MailTrack's gonna keep a hold of all the emails so you don't lose them and make it easy for you to send every week. But keep in mind, the free version of MailTrack only allows you to have five contacts in each mail list, which can be good because you're forced to make more niche lists so you're not sending all the producers the same loops. So now you have these emails, you've got them in mail track. Now you're going to be sending these loops off. We recommend sending about two to four hard loops every week or so. We have found this has worked well for us and talking to other producers, it's worked well for them too. So upload these loops as MP3s to your email, write a subject line describing your loops in an engaging way. And from there, simply add your beat stars name to the email and your Instagram handle. So these producers can find you if they need to get in contact with you. By using mail track, you can see if producers open your emails or not. If you notice somebody is never opening up your loops, we recommend taking the email off the mail list and stop sending to them. If Gmail sees that you're sending emails consistently to someone who never opens them, they detect this as spam and they could potentially start putting your loops in other producers spam boxes as well. Okay boys, once you've been working on your craft and been getting consistent type beat placements, you can begin to create and upload free sample packs onto a YouTube channel. This basically means you're going to create roughly 6 to 15 loops, put them together in a pack, make a cover art, upload them to a website like Payhip, and then post a video on your loop channel promoting the loop kit. The way this can lead to more collab sales is because producers looking for loops are going to be searching up loops in their niche. If you run your loop channel the correct way, they'll find your loops through search terms and be able to download and use your loops. And because you're going to have terms in your kit, saying your loops are not royalty free and require 50-50 splits, the producer is going to have to add you as a collaborator when they upload their beat to beat stars. The benefits of uploading these free loop kits to YouTube are that you're going to get your loops out there to so many more people, allowing them to download and use your loops in their own time. Although we have found that if you're trying to work with the top beat makers on YouTube and beat stars, these people often aren't looking on YouTube for loops as they already have the emails stacked with hard loops. So the type beat placements you're going to get from your free loop kits tend to be YouTube producers with smaller followings. But even these small producers make sales. So enough of that. If you're interested in learning more about uploading free sample packs the right way and blowing up your loop channel, we have two videos that will help you a shit ton with this. One taking you through the whole process of uploading your loop kit, the art, putting your packs together, setting up your pay hip, and what to do after you've posted your kit. And another video giving you the source on how to blow up your loop channel and get more people seeing your kits. If you follow all the steps that we've covered in this video so far, within the next year, you would have easily got your first $1,000. You'll be getting heaps of people using your loops and you would have started to have built a name for yourself within the type beat space. But for those of you who have extra time to work on your music business and want to take it further than just collab sales, you will need to be focusing on growing your brand and making better music. So this will consist of getting content out on YouTube, Instagram, any social media platform where you can reach other producers. The aim of this is to start building a following and a community who are going to support you and be loyal to you and what you do. Making better music just explains itself. Go further than just the average producer who makes a couple loops that anybody can replicate and then just goes away and plays some games. If you really want to take this a step further, you really need to be spending all your extra time making better music, making better loops, nothing else. Boys, to give you some insight into what else will make you money in the future after you've done your first year and made your first $1,000. You can sell loop kits or sound kits to help other sample makers and beat makers. You've got YouTube AdSense, which will come from making content, doing tutorials, doing vlogs, cook-up sessions, whatever you can think of. You'll get more money from placement royalties as well as upfront payments from these placements. One-on-one -on -one consultations and digital products are other things you can do. They require a bit more work and effort and planning to go behind them, but they are things that you can look into for the future. With every month that goes by that you're just hustling, working hard and growing your brand, heaps of new opportunities will just keep flowing in. However, we recommend you stick to one or two things that you're just really good at and just go all in on those. That's the best chance you're gonna get at seeing any success with your music. Boys, you've got the tools, you've got the game plan, put it into action starting today. We'll see you in the next video.